We Christians believe in God, but sometimes we believe in a God that fills us with a great deal of fear. And then, moving from fear, we have a God who loves us and accepts us. Stay tuned. <laughs> My name is Father Mike Manning. I'm a Catholic priest. I'm a priest that's coming into your life and telling you that God loves you very much. God believes in you. And in the midst of all of the discouragement that you feel, maybe even the separation from God, that God loves you more than you can ever imagine. And I want to tell you a little bit about that. And as I tell you about God's love, I want to share a little bit about my own struggle with God, my own road to try to come to an encounter and a love for God in my own life. When I think of God as a young person, I have to admit to you that there was a great deal of awe and wonder about God. I was raised with good Catholic parents that, that instilled in me a, a love for God, a love for the church. But there was a, there was a cruel anger, uh, angle to God. There was, a, there was a, an anger there was an avenging, there was a distancing God, a God that I feared very much. My early relationship with God was one of a God who was watching over, trying to catch me, even willing to be more concerned about getting me into hell rather than getting me into heaven. And this fear became one of scrupulosity and a very painful, struggling distance from God. I would read the Bible, and this would be fortified very much. If you have your Bible there, if you'd turn with me to 1 Samuel and turn to chapter 15, let me read to you from some of the Bible, Bible things here that, that, give me a, or that gave me this indication of God full of fear, watching out for me, avenging, and someone that, oh, you better obey those laws or you're going to go to hell. And that that hell dominated my life. Listen to these, these words from the, from the, the uh, book of Samuel. One day Samuel told Saul, the Lord has, has me choose you to be the king of the people Israel. Now listen to the message from the Lord. When the Israelites were on their way out of Egypt, the nation of Amalek Attack them. I am the Lord, all-powerful, and now I am going to make Amalek pay. And now, uh, this, this God that was the God of my fear said this uh, through the prophet Samuel to the, uh, to the king Saul. Go and attack the Amalekites. Destroy them and all their possessions. Don't have any pity. Kill their men, women, children, and even their babies. Slaughter their cattle, sheep, camels, and donkeys. <laughs> I don't know about you, but when I hear that, out of my deep respect for the Word of God, there's this, this word, there's this image of God who is very, very difficult to deal with, a God who would instill a great deal of fear in you. Where would you go? Where do you go aside from, oh God, I'm, I'm going to try to follow those commandments. Oh God, I'm going to try to do exactly what you want. And I'm going to try to do all kinds of things in order to somehow push away that anger that so easily can be read from some of your words in the Bible. Well, in the midst of this, in the midst of this, I had, a, I had a fascinating experience. When I was first ordained, uh, this is way back in the, the late 60s and early 70s, 
I was assigned to a high school in Watts in Southern California, a, a rough neighborhood. And I have to tell you that I wasn't very much of a success. I'm not a great disciplinarian when it comes to a bunch of teenagers. And so uh, I spent two years teaching in the school. And as I was teaching, oh boy, this was, this was tough. But one time, I remember I was teaching religion in the, in, in the class. I guess they were sophomores or juniors. And I was talking about God as being all-powerful, as God being all-present, you know, and as God being all-knowing. And again, this is part of that, that relationship with God that was filled with awe and certainly fear, but distance from my own personal life. Well, after I had finished the class, one of the students came up to talk with me, and I was always I was amazed that anyone wanted to talk with me because usually after class they wanted to get out and get to the next class or get to lunch and start playing basketball. But he said, Father, I was listening to your talk and you were saying that God is all powerful, all present, and all knowing. He said, is that right? And I said, yes. Yeah, I was delighted that he had, he'd been able to understand and he remembered what I said. He said, I have some problems about this God who is all-knowing. I said, yes, what is it? Said, Father, I can't stand a know-it-all. <laughs> well, he said it to me, and, and, I, and I had to agree with him that I, I don't like a know-it-all, but when he related it to God, I said something that I tried to, to, see, to, to get him out of the place because I didn't know what else to say to him. But when I went back to my room, and got quiet at home, started to think about what he had said. And it's very true. I don't like a know-it-all. And his question started a quest in my own life, a quest to try to understand and get in touch with a God who wasn't all concerned about vengeance, who wasn't all concerned about anger, who wasn't all concerned about slaughtering men, women, children, and even babies. Is it possible that God, who is certainly all-knowing, is also a God who wants me to pray to him? Now, if, if God is all-knowing and I pray to him, there isn't much of a, a relationship of intimacy that's going to go on because, well, if God knows all the answers and God knows everything, anything that I'm praying He's kind of sitting there like, oh, you know, I've, I've, I've written the book of his life. I know what's going on. And it's just kind of following a pattern that's already been predetermined. And so there isn't much chance for intimacy. But then as I studied the Bible, I came to this scary, scary challenge that certainly God is this God of of, of righteousness and vengeance and justice. But is it possible that God is also caring about me and even listening to me and God is present to me with tender, caring love? And I went into the Bible and I started reading. Okay, so I, I moved from Samuel and I came to, I came to the book of Genesis. And I was reading about the story of Moses. Remember, Moses was a person who was raised in Egypt, and then he killed someone. He murdered someone and had to flee at the age of 18. And for the majority of his life, he lived a, a life of one running away from the law in the land of the Medians. And then God came to him in his 70s and said, Moses, I want you to lead my people out of Israel. And the conversation in the book of Genesis is very powerful. Uh, turn with me, if you would, to, if you go to chapter 3 in the, in, in the book of Exodus, rather, excuse me, the book of Exodus. Moses is out taking care of sheep, and then suddenly he sees a burning bush. And he wonders, because the bush isn't being destroyed, but the fire is still going, and he goes to investigate, and he finds God is there, and God talks to him from the bush and tells him, take off your shoes, because the place you're standing in is sacred. 
And there's a real conversation between God and Moses. And Moses answered, he said, I will tell the people Israel that the God their ancestors worshiped has sent me to them. But what should I say if they ask me your name? And God said to Moses, I am the eternal God. So tell them that the Lord, whose name is I am, has sent you. This is my name forever, and it is the name that the people must use from now on. God's name is I am. Not in the past, not in the future. God is a person who is present in the now moment, and in that now moment, I can encounter a God of mercy and love. Stay with me. I'm going to be coming back. I've got a message that I want to share with you about helping to support this ministry. But let's let's listen and, and move with me in this quest to understand and get a handle on the real meaning of God, not just a God of fear and vengeance, but a God who is now and also a God of intimate love and mercy. Stay tuned. For your willingness to be able to help us here in our television ministry, I want to send you a gift for your gift. It's written by a priest, a friend of mine. His name is Father Marty Padovani. He's a member of my community. The title of the book is Healing Wounded Relationships. It speaks to the heart of what goes on in your family, in your marriage. So many times the struggle between a husband and a wife, parents and children, even the struggle between the close family and the distant family is something that needs to have an answer, needs help. And I want to tell you that this book by my friend, Father Padovani, is going to reach into your heart in a loving, caring way. The topics that are, that are handled are some that you're going to say, oh dear, things like communication, listening. How do you deal with conflict? How do you have greater intimacy in your marriage, especially when perhaps you've been together for too many years to now really have intimacy, not just physical intimacy, but emotional intimacy and even spiritual intimacy. The book is powerful, and the book is going to enable you to find the peace and the bridge that you're looking for to be able to come to the fullness of what it means to have a life together. Remember, Father Marty Padovani, Healing Wounded Relationships. Make sure you get in touch with us through your check through your donation and ask, please, would you send me that important book that can bring healing to my marriage, to my family? Please do it right now. God is I am. Kind of a philosophical general way, but God is present in your life right now, whatever's going on, whether it's a a joy, whether it's a pain, whether it's a battle with sin, God is here and he's saying, I am now with tenderness and care. But then this, this presence of God, this breaking away from the God of fear to a God of intimacy comes very strongly in my life with my relationship with Jesus. And my relationship with Jesus, of course, comes through the beauty of the church and through the sacraments, but also through the Bible. And the words that Jesus is able to say to me today to bring God close into my life changes my life and allows me to find peace and security in the midst of all kind of people throwing out hooks saying, hey, this is where you should be going. This is the life that you should lead. And suddenly the Bible becomes the real source of the peace and the direction that I want in my life. And God becomes real. Um, 
one of the most beautiful understandings of the closeness of God to us, this God who, as I said, was, was a God of fear and vengeance and all-knowing and all distant from me, suddenly now becoming close to me. And, and let me read to you, I'm, I'm going to read to you from the 15th chapter of the Gospel of John. Jesus is speaking about his Father and about himself and the Holy Spirit. Listen to this. Jesus says, If anyone loves me, they will obey me. Then my Father will love them, and we will come to them and live in them. Did you hear that? <laughs> this is one of the most astonishing things in our own struggle to know God and to, to kind of work through these ideas of the vengeance and the, and the power and the, and the distance of God. To hear Jesus come and say this, and let me read it to you again. This is taken from the 14th chapter of the Gospel of John. Verse, I'm reading from verse 23. Try to, try to let this be part of your life too. And if you get after this, pull that, pull that up and read it. Jesus says, if anyone loves me, they will obey me. Then my Father will love them, and we will come to them and live in them. What a far cry from this struggling image of God who is keeping a, a list of all my sins and watching what I do and so easy to throw me into hell, to a God who is now, as he said to Moses, I am, he's present to me, and present to me with a loving care that is so intimate that he wants to live in me. Imagine that. We in the Trinity have the Father and the Son, and we know from the readings, of, uh, the readings and the writings of St. Paul, the Spirit also comes and dwells in us. The triune God is dwelling right now in this heart. This heart <laughs> that is so filled with questions, this heart that is so struggling to try to understand the meaning of God, and God comes and says, Michael, I love you. Um, whenever I think of God coming and dwelling in me, I think of the reality of someone in come and coming and saying, oh, could I come and visit you? Well, I love to have people come and visit me. And I said, sure. And so they come and they visit me for a day. Oh, we're having a good time. We might go to Disneyland. We might see the site and whatnot. And then there's the second day. And oh, we have good times. Go out to eat. Have some good fun time there. Then it's the third day. And then it's the fourth day. And all of a sudden, my striving for independence and freedom starts to be impinged upon by these people, and the thought of having them around too much becomes a burden. And now, and now, I read in the Gospel of John, in chapter 14, verse 23, then the Father, then my Father will love them, and we will come to them and live in them. Live in them, not for a day, not for two days, not for three days, but get this, God wants to live in us forever. And that's our faith, that God in Jesus Christ loves us and will never leave us. Oh, brothers and sisters, please, allow God if you've gone down the road that I've gone, which is a, a God of fear and distance, to maybe be put away and to allow this reaching out, this intimacy that God wants to give to touch our hearts. That's what Christianity is all about. It's allowing ourselves to get away from the distant God to be with us. Pray with me for just a moment. Just, just come, come with me now in this moment. Jesus. I believe that you're God, and I believe in the 
power of this, this word that can speak of you filled with vengeance and you filled with anger. But somehow, Lord, now in your words, I can experience intimacy, love, tenderness, and a desire to be with me forever. Help me, Lord. Help me, Lord, in the midst of my sinfulness, and my doubts, and my habits of sin to move away and to allow you to be present in me. And I know you're here, but now allow me to understand that you love me and you're with me now and for all eternity. Empower me, Lord, with that love. Empower me with a desire to find peace in my life and with a desire now to share that good news with as many people as possible all around the world. Please, brothers and sisters, whatever's going on in your life, God is real. God is present to you. God is living in you. And in that life that God gives, you'll find the peace, the joy, and the eternal life that only God can give. I would like to invite you to participate in this program, not only with your prayers, but also with your donations. And as you reach out and give support, I would like to reach out and give you a very special gift. It's a book by a friend of mine, Father Marty Padovani, a Divine Word missionary. The title of the book is Healing Wounded Relationships. This book gets to the heart of what's breaking up families today. The struggle with communication, the struggle with commitment, the struggle with intimacy in our life. I want you to have this and not only be blessed by what you see on the television program, but you can take this home and you can take this to bed and you can allow yourself to reach the fullness of the meaning of what real love is about by allowing relationships to be healed. One of the joys of this ministry is being able to hear from you. Uh, I, I appreciate you having patience with me and trying to share my love for God, my, my fear of God, and yet now the overpowering presence of Jesus in his offering of intimate presence with me. And I hope that that has given you a sense of consolation and a sense of hope and a sense of power because this love that God gives us is not just a love that kind of sitting there, but it's a love that's a fire, especially with the Holy Spirit, that calls us to continue to do the works that Jesus did. We are called to do the works that Christ did and even greater than Christ did, so that when we find him allowing someone who's crippled to stand up and walk, or someone that's blind being able to see, or a heart that is broken because of hopelessness, he touches these people and he heals them and he cures them and they become new people. You and I are empowered to let that happen. And that's, that's what I wanna to say to you. I wanna I want to call you to that greatness of what it means that God loves you so much and God lives in you. And because of that, you are empowered to do great things. Well, that all is, is, is kind of on the bottom line of by saying thank you very much for writing to me. Thank you also for pulling up the web page and on that web page finding the section where you can write in your special prayers. That's really important. Thank you also for picking up your telephone and calling. We've got volunteers that are right here in the studio that are waiting for your call, waiting to hear from you, waiting to know of your prayer intention, and waiting to know if you're willing to be able to allow us to continue with perhaps a donation that which you, you would give every month. Very important for that, and this is, this is how we keep going. But I, um, I want to share some of the letters because um, you, uh, you keep me going when you write. You keep me going when you allow me to know what's going on in your heart, what you agree with and what you don't agree with, with the programs that we're doing. 
I like especially the nice ones. And here, Father Manning, um, this is from Michael, and he's saying, I enjoy your program immensely. I look forward to it each Wednesday morning. Your programming is moving and useful. Um, I get a good feeling watching the program, and I feel closer to God by the discussions. Well, thank you very much, and that's the whole purpose of everything that we're doing, trying to get closer to God with the belief in God that God is working in our hearts. He even talks something about Bishop Sheen. Yeah, he was one of my heroes also, and um, we need more and more of people, especially from the Catholic faith, to ex experience the power of what goes on. Uh, dear Father Mike, this is from someone of San Jose, uh, California. My husband and I became spirit-filled, born-again Christians over 24 years ago. The Holy Spirit of God has empowered us and made all the difference in our work with the Lord. Thank you. Praise the Lord that you as a Catholic priest are giving very, a very clear message of salvation through Jesus Christ and no other. We believe that God is using you in a mighty way among those who, who trust priests and not necessarily evangelists or pastors. We appreciate your obvious love. Okay, thank you, Frida, very much. Yeah, I like this. Uh, here's another one. This is from New Jersey. My wife and I enjoy your recent program with your guest, uh, Robert Blair Kaiser. We found the program very stimulating and thought-provoking, and that's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to get that across to you. Yeah. We wish to support your program. In close, please find a check for that donation. Again, thank you very much. That's what we need. We need that commitment, not only that we bless you, but that you bless me with letters and also with the support that you can give. So Joe and, and Joan from, uh, from Morris, Morris Plains, New Jersey, I thank you very much for what you're doing. Well, it's not always positive. Um, this is a, a concern, and it was a, a program that we did with the comedian Tim Conway. Um, I was uh, uh, channel surfing and caught part of your interview with Tim Conway. I have to tell you, some of the jokes bordered on sacrilege. But worst of all, you cheapen Catholic programming by putting it on a station known for its blasphemy. Well, uh, we get a lot of negative things coming through, too. I don't believe that. I believe God is a God of joy and happiness, and this program that we did uh, certainly wasn't meant to be blasphemous, but to show that there's a joy and there's a happiness in God that we need to reflect. Well, thank you for writing. Please write. You, you have the address right there. You have the email chance of getting in touch. Please pick up the telephone. Let us know what's going on. Let's communicate, and may God bless you richly, and may Jesus' love for you always make you smile.